right, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Grace to you, peace to you, welcome to you, welcome to everyone, especially welcome to those who are visiting with us this morning. It is our hope that something is said, something is done, something is shared that gives you just the word you need in order to be blessed and to be healed. So I call your attention to announcements. There's all kinds of things that are going on as usual in this time of year. And uh, take a look at those and please continue to lift up in prayer the work of our congregation. And as our ushers are passing out these friendship pads or what we call connections count, please sign in and give us some information so that we can say hello to you and thank you to you and welcome to you. Uh, that's always appreciated. Uh, we promise we don't nag. We just want to say hi, okay? All right. So to lift up a couple of announcements, uh, first of all, our choir today, uh, in keeping with the theme of joy, our choir is going to share their gifts. And so thank you so much to you. And uh, we'll thank you again at the end. But thank you for doing that. And then also after our church service is a potluck. And there was lots of great smells uh, coming from uh, Smith Hall in the kitchen. We hope that everyone will stay. Even if you didn't bring something, we always find a way to always have enough. There is always a place at our table for you. So we hope that you stay. And then also, uh, Facilities Work Day is next Saturday. It kind of falls late into the month, but it is next Saturday. And if you uh, want to show up anywhere between 7.30 and 9 o'clock, we can find something for you to do to be helpful to us here because uh, it's a big campus and a lot to take care of, and you're always welcome to be a part of that. And there are usually donuts. So there's, there's a reason to get out of bed. And so uh, we hope that you join us for Facilities Work Day. And then the next day on that Sunday is our solstice concert. And this has been a, a tradition now. I, don't even, I, I couldn't even tell you how many years, but it feels like it's been over five, maybe closer to ten years. Yet, yeah, Judy, you would know how many years. I think, it's, I think it is 10 years now. So it's a great event, and uh, there's usually anywhere from 250 to 300 plus people here, and great talent from all over the valley sharing music and really ushering in the winter solstice. And so we hope that you can be a part of that as well. You'll be blessed. Well, take a deep breath. We use this moment to center ourselves, to step away from all the rush and the clutter, to center ourselves, to know that we are with each other, with people that there is mutual love and respect, and that there is a God who cares. And it is a spirit of life and love that brings us together and holds us together. And so now, choir, share the joy.
Friends, this is a time when we get to sing our welcome to each other. So I would invite you to stand if you are comfortably able and actually look around and look in each other's eyes and sing this welcome to each other. the first candle for peace. Today we light the second candle, the candle of joy. This should be an easy one because joy is all around us, in the children, in the lights, in the music, the gathering together. But how often do we let our preparations or our memories push joy to the side? Joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us, but joy is also a choice an attitude. Like a muscle, it needs to be exercised. So today we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. All we need to do is give it care and offer it to share. Loving, Loving God, God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. This is a time in our service where we lift up birthdays and anniversaries. We lift up the celebrations of our lives. It can be that perhaps you were surprised by grace. If you have had such an inbreaking of grace in your life, feel free to stand up and let an usher come to you with a microphone so then that way we can all hear it and we can all share it. So we'll start on this side and we will move across the sanctuary in this way. So we will start over here. Good morning. Good birthday, morning. birthday month. Uh, precious darling bride Kathy had a 
birthday the other day. We won't say when, what year it was, 1946. Uh, <laughs> she's, a young, she's young. Uh, Sister-in-law is uh, today, and we have our oldest granddaughter, who will be 34, I think, uh, later in the month. All right, thank you. Rick. Rick Stewart, and today we're celebrating our daughter's 40th birthday. I don't know how she got that old. Uh, Brianne, and she's in Washington, D.C., and we're going to join them this Christmas. We fly out there on Christmas Eve, so we're looking forward to that. Wonderful. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. My name is Linda Miro, and on Wednesday, the 11th, I will celebrate a birthday. God has blessed me with 78 years of life. Nice. Steve. Steve Merrill, the other half of this one here. I'd like to celebrate my father who passed away and used to give us a poem every Christmas. Um, and I'll share the poem with you. Uh, Christmas is coming, the geese are getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you've got a halfpenny, then God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Nikki Tucker. <clears throat> With no voice. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, two things. One, um, our legislative district 15 had a wonderful uh, Christmas party here in Smith Hall on Friday night, and they absolutely loved everything. They just thought it was the best place. And I can't tell you how many thank yous out the door. You guys are so gracious. You guys are so great. This is so great. So that was really nice. Um, secondly, um, we have a great potluck this morning with a ton of desserts, and uh, they all look good. And Joyce will need some help, and I'm not sure how many people had planned on that, but she'll probably need three or four people. If you can leave um, right at the words for mission to go help her, that would be awesome. There's a ton in there. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Alison. Yeah, I have a couple of things I uh, want to celebrate. We had a, a really, really nice Keystone um, dinner last night at the Bonstills. And we had a contest for the ugliest uh, Christmas shirt. And I'll have to say, um, our sonny over here won the, uh, old, the best, oldest, ugliest Christmas shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry, who did? No, Steve. Keep, the, Steve. keep the microphone close here. Steve Merrill. Steve Merrill. <laughs> Good job, Steve. All right. And then I'm just celebrating. It'll be five years uh, on the 12th that Phil has been gone. And so I, we miss him every day. And then later in the week, we celebrate um, the youngest grandchild's first birthday in Germany, Ellison, who's Alyssa's baby. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, we miss Phil. We miss Phil as well. But all of us are better because we knew him. We celebrate that. Yeah. I'm Amelia. Amelia. Um, I actually am just standing up to celebrate that song we just sang. I've never heard that version before, and I loved it. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> we have a saying around here. Some will be glad, and some will be sad. All right? All right. Very good. Thank you for that. Good word. Okay. I... Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Dritzis, and I have two things to say. About maybe a month ago, I asked Lois if I could put plants in the planters in the festival garden, and I would maintain them through the year and make sure that they always look like a happy, peaceful place that it should be. I was granted that, and I want to thank a couple of people. Bill Peterson and Joe Patelli helped by getting the water lines in and without that, we couldn't have it, although God has certainly blessed the plants today <laughs> with a little extra rain. And I want to thank my precious husband, who schlepped bags of soil and plants for two mornings to get, to get all this done for us. The second thing is, um, those of you who know me well <clears throat> know that I'm probably a really avid thrifter. My clothes come from the Goodwill. I love my home and my decorations and my beautiful dishes, and they all come mostly from thrift stores. Well, uh, several years ago, <clears throat> I found the most precious, beautiful thing I ever could, and that's my friend Vicki. Yeah. 
and I found her at a Goodwill. <laughs> and wow. I, I couldn't imagine anyone spending so much time looking at dishes. And I finally said, what are you doing? And you look so cute in that top. And that started a breakfast the next day. And we are best friends. So you want to stand up? So Welcome. Thank you, Woods. Wow, look what you find at Goodwill. Wow. Yeah, her. This morning, I would like to celebrate Sherry. Sherry, would you please stand up? Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Sherry is an angel on the earth. She cares for people and organizes things for people so that we can all share and be happy. Friday, everyone who is involved in helping Miss Ayel we were all given the opportunity to make some contributions, to gather some gifts, and Sherry gave him, I think, probably the happiest birthday he's had in a very long time. Sherry, you're so thoughtful to do that and let the rest of us participate. There's one other thing, too, and this is one that's you know, a little bit more sticky. Every now and then, Sherry uh, points out that we have opportunities to serve, and she does not explain what these opportunities are. <laughs> and I got roped into something on Friday, not knowing what I was doing. She said she needed another driver. We were going to court. Oi, going to court. <laughs> I didn't know what it was about. And when we got there, I discovered Javier was going to formally become legal guardian of Beth's children to watch them all stand up and answer the judge saying, yes, we want this wonderful man to be our guardian. It was just a, a beautiful experience. Sherry, thank you for the surprises that you bring into our lives. <laughs> and Shatterock, thank all of you who helped contribute the money that got Javier out of jail so that he could not only be guardian to these children, but have a normal life. The things that Shatterock accomplishes, sometimes I'm, I'm worried that you guys don't know all the good that you do. So it's my pleasure today to be the announcer of great things that are instigated primarily by the wonderful Sherry. Thank you. Amen. Do you have, you have another person? So Alice Ann shared that it would spend five years since Phil died. And uh, Phil and Greg were really good friends. And Phil died a remarkable uh, death by telling all the people that were there that day to support and love him to come in one by one. And he told them goodbye. And then he died. And it also happened to be Greg's birthday. So that's, but when my first thought was, oh, I'm sorry to Greg. And he went, no. This means that every birthday, I'll think of my friend, Phil. So happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Oh, you got a word, Greg? You're not going to let Marilyn have the last word? No. <laughs> OK. Uh, Marilyn and I had the privilege yesterday of going to the Glendale Union High School District, all district honor band and orchestra. So we had all the top orchestra students and then we had all the top band students in the Glendale Union High School District for about two hour performance. It was absolutely wonderful. Those kids are really, really good. They are. No, no. No, no, grand, no grandchildren involved? Oh, I nope. just had one. So okay. All right. <laughs> Very good. All right. And uh, to, follow, to, to follow up on what Herb was saying, uh, I did receive a text on um, uh, Friday late morning after the court time for Yvette, Javier, and the children. And she, I wanted to share this with you. I want to thank you very, very much, Pastor Ken. I'm blessed that God placed me here at Shadow Rock 
surrounding me with such great people who I can call friends who became part of my family. My prayers were always answered. I was just too blind to see it. There is no words that can explain the feeling and joy I feel. Thank you. So, let's sing our celebration song. Good morning, Shadow Rock. <laughs> if you can, if you are comfortably able, please stand. Now, this is the second time we're doing this song, and it comes with a call and response. It's meant that you guys sing what I sing, and the choir follows. But if you feel comfortable echoing, that's okay too. So let's kick this off. I feel good. I feel good. I feel great. I feel great. I think it's time. I think it's time to celebrate. To celebrate. Whether it's your birthday anniversary or you're just having a good day, we're glad you're here. Glad you're here to celebrate. To celebrate. Let's celebrate. To celebrate. You're me. Step 
majesty, gentle folk, let nothing you dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. God rest ye, gentle folk, let nothing you dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Oh, tidings of great joy, tidings of joy. Oh, tidings of great joy, tidings of comfort and great joy. Comfort and joy. Father and blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the for the celebration of life in this place and beyond for the furthering of justice, inclusion, and spirituality shall now be received. Thank you. 
Thank you. That was really beautiful. Thank you. I ask that you would pray with me, please. Let's pray. Spirit of life and love. God of many names, every name, and beyond all names. Pour out your spirit upon your people. Bless what is said and what is heard. This is our prayer. As we speak, as we pray from a deep hunger and a deep thirst. Amen. So uh, I am grateful to everyone who helped make last Sunday work. Uh, It was a morning with a lot going on. We embraced new members. We shared communion. And Dr. Reverend Patricia Stantall Clark shared my message with you. Uh, Sharing someone else's message has its own unique risk. And so she is not to be held responsible. (laughs) And I hear she did so with great grace. So thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Lois and Abbott and Karen. And thank you, ushers. And welcome new friends and members. All of those things. So uh, I have uh, a notion here because it is uh, this choir music. There's so much of it going on. Uh, I actually want to know... uh, Does anyone know who Santa's favorite singer is? Santa's favorite singer? Huh? What are you doing? Carol. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Carol, like uh, uh, Carol Burnett. (laughs) No, no, you're 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 all wrong. It's um, it's Elf Fitz Presley. There we are. We're going to do. All right. Well, friends, there are, again, two things I want to convey to you this morning. It is an invitation and a promise. The invitation is to use your imagination for the Advent season. And this is the time of year when we can be most able to use our imaginations and be forgiven for doing so. These weeks will be full as Christmas stockings with songs and stories of flying reindeer and overworked elves and talking snowmen. We will go along for the sake of others. We will embrace the impossible, wink at each other, and for moments actually participate in the magic. Does this sound familiar to some of you? I'm asking that you open your hearts and your minds and take your imaginations up a level. Imagine that the next few weeks you are on a pilgrimage. You're on a pilgrimage from brokenness to wholeness. I encourage you that to yourself or to someone you trust that you would name your greatest hurt or your greatest fear. It might be something you did a long time ago. It might be something someone did to you. It can be very personal. Or it can be your own broken heart over racism, hunger, or injustice. You begin this pilgrimage from this point And please note, 
I call this a pilgrimage and not a journey because a journey does not describe the depth of this season's invitation to you. Now look at the map on the front of your bulletin. The big picture pilgrimage is from brokenness to wholeness. But each week the pilgrimage will invite you to a particular reflection. What does your movement from brokenness to wholeness look like when it is viewed from the perspective of moving from conflict to peace, which you did last week, from sorrow to joy, which we do this morning, from despair to hope, which we will do next week, and finally, before Christmas Eve, a movement, a pilgrimage from apathy to love. And where do we end up? Asked another way, where is God? Where is life? Where is love calling us to go? and calling us to be. A pilgrimage is a sacred journey. Sometimes a sacred journey begins with that intention, and sometimes a journey ends with the gift of being a pilgrimage. It wasn't what we intended when we start out, but it came to us and blessed us. So open your hearts and minds and use your imagination. The second thing I want to convey to you this morning is a promise. The promise is that we can move from sorrow to joy. One of the things that has come to me in this past week is that I am always working to convey a theology that is honest, realistic, and hopeful, and healing. But you sometimes, you don't need me to share my theology. What you need most is for me to share my heart. When I share my theology, I always try to acknowledge the world's brokenness and your brokenness. And the need that we have, and then to offer a wisdom, not my wisdom, but far from it, but wisdom from a deep religious tradition that I have found spiritual comfort and hope. In this, you may have missed that my aim has always been to lift your own spirits to offer you comfort and to give you hope. I hear your weariness. I hear your worry. My heart breaks with yours as you grieve the losses of your spouses, your parents, your children, your jobs, your idealism, and your dreams. I also feel my life shrinking as I cannot do everything I used to do. I I cannot move furniture downstairs the way I used to be able to, to do. And for the last three years, Peg and I's life together has been dominated by a roller coaster ride of needs and issues and victories related to our adult children. Adult children by birth and one and one by spiritual adoption. The roller coaster ride is not over, nor will it be over, because that is life. When I hear you express hurt and anger, even over something such as changing the words to traditional Christmas songs, I hear behind your words and hearts that are tired and worn out, tired and worn out from the demands of love and life and justice. I see you are fatigued. 
And you need Christmas as a break from such demands. For 11 months out of the year, you're willing to put it all out there and put it all on the line for neighbor, love of neighbor and love of God. But for four weeks, can we please take a break? (laughs) Can we please lose ourselves in the warmth of family and memories? The sorrow is always so close to the surface. For so many things in our lives and for the sake of the world. Can we not put it on the shelf with the elf for just a little while? I've said for years as your pastor, that Advent is the season of the wedge blade, unlike any other liturgical season. The anticipation of peace, joy, hope, and love being born into the world is God's newest thrust in the midst of history. And even when I feel my most down and beaten up, I cannot shake loose of the conviction that has a hold of me that love is the last word and is constantly always being born into the world and calling us to greater love for one another. In Christianity, the incarnation The presence of God with us, Emmanuel, is God's newest thrust in history. As such love is being born every minute of every day. But friends, I get it. You're tired. And you need a silent night for just a little while. Karen Richter, the director of spiritual formation, is correct. Christmas is all about social justice. But can we put it on a shelf with the elf for just a little while? No one. And no community can sustain a cutting edge of inclusion and justice all the time. We are not God. We are human beings with our needs and our frailties. We are human beings and we need to give our spirits rest. We feel overwhelmed and the sorrow builds up. We want to take a break But there is a thin line between denying our sorrow and denying our joy. I am with William Wordsworth on this one. In his poem, Surprised by Joy, he asked a question. Joy, how could I forget thee? Through what power, even for the least division of an hour, have I been so beguiled as to be blind to my most grievous loss? Which is joy. Sorrow and the reasons for its existence seem to be all around us. It is powerful, and we must be careful not to be blinded by it. Sorrow can be like blinders on a horse, and like a horse we trudge and slog through the same grief paths of life, and then we miss the joy and the reasons for joy that are all around us. And so to make the point, I turn to another poet that says it better than I can. The poem is called The Weed. (laughs) 
in the beginning, I ignore it. Weed, I think, and tell myself. I will uproot it another day. The next time I look, it has a second set of leaves. I yank it out, but it burrows deep. I make a mental note. I must use iron on it. But I forget again. The next time I look, it is knee high, ready to flower. Ruthlessly, I cut it down, defy it to try again. There is no room in my garden for the unplanned invader. I grow busy, tend the neat beds, water and feed each sprout, prune and spray the bushes. I look at last in the dark corner. It is flowering. Tall, straight stalks bearing pink, fragrant flowers, strong, sweet perfume drifts across the garden. And at last, at last I can name it. Joy. (laughs) Growing unbidden and unnurtured in the depth of my soul. Ultimately, joy does not come to us from the outside. It grows like a stubborn weed on the inside of us because of the deep giftedness of life of which we are a part. Amen. I, I'm going to have you stay seated because our final blessing is from the choir and the song that they will share. But I would ask you that you would join me in the words for mission. Take time in the busyness of this season for quiet reflection. Find what makes you joyful and make that your gift to the world. The good news of Advent is this. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming. These are the times. We are the people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. God be with you. And also with you. Amen. Julie and Van, and our last song is called Rejoice, Christ is Born, but we call it Tiki Tiki Poom. <laughs>
Oh!